I'm leaving AWS and I'm now an Azure engineer. Kind of. My name is Luke, I'm a cloud consultant, I am certified and have high client experience on AWS and on Azure, but I am for the foreseeable moving to Azure, at least it's become my preferred, and I have five reasons for this, let's go through them. So, first things first, the market. What is the market saying? Well, as you can see here, Amazon is still the market leader. However, Microsoft, as we can see here, is the fastest growing. Now, my logic and the logic when I look on LinkedIn and look at jobs is that if it's the fastest growing, there's going to be the fastest uptake in the number of required engineers, meaning I can only think that the demand for engineers is going to go up as this goes up. Whereas if this is steady, as long as engineers don't drop out, you know, that's my thinking. And based on what I see on LinkedIn and from what I can hear. Secondly, as my company specifically is targeting enterprise clients, enterprise clients use Windows. So when they migrate to the cloud, they want to migrate to Azure generally. Secondly, now that I use it, usability, man, honestly. So in AWS, you get here an EC2. EC2 is an Elastic Compute 2. What's an Elastic Compute 2? It is their compute resource, but it's Elastic. But is it really? It's basically a virtual machine. In Azure, they call it a virtual machine. Now, Amazon is terrible for it. And as you can see here, here's some examples. SageMaker is their machine learning service. Alexa Skills Kit is their bot framework. Lex is their speech services. Poly, speech services, transcribe. Recognition is their cognitive services. Skills Kit, virtual assistant. And then they have a bunch of random names like Elastic Beanstalk and, you know, Route 53, all this stuff instead of just normal names. In Azure, it's normal names, and I am loving it. Secondly, in usability, I love this concept of resource grouping. Now, some people will complain and have issues with, well, how do I group my resources? But I don't think that's the fundamental thing here. The fundamental reason that it's good is because you have the ability to group resources. In AWS, you can't, so you have to tag them. And if you don't tag them, if you don't tag your resources, when you then search that tag, it's difficult to find them. And also, it's just not a very good way of finding it because you have to search for the tag. Whereas in the resource group, all these resources are in that group. You want to get rid of them? Delete the group. You want to see them? Go to the group. Whereas here, you have to actually search for the tag. So, usability. Next up, we have certifications. This was actually my initial reason for looking into Azure, was because AWS have recently introduced this AI practitioner, which is in beta, this machine learning engineer, which is in beta. But when I first started looking at Azure, data engineer was in beta. So they didn't have this or this or this. So you could only get cloud practitioner as a fundamental cert. Then from there, you would move on to here where I have this, and then I was looking at these two, or I was then looking to get some specialty, but then I'd really need to know machine learning in depth to get it. So really, I'm going to look at a pro to benefit my career. Whereas for... Da, 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 copy and pasted the wrong one. Anyway, whereas for Azure here, for the fundamentals, within like a couple of days of studying, I could get a basis in AI, a basis in data, and a basis in the cloud, right? Which just gives me that step into the door to just understanding what it is and what's there, right? Next up for the associate one, there's an ability to get a data science associate, security uh, associate, it's like a specialty for security, and then the Azure admin, which is the same as the associate here, developer, but then also data engineer, database admin, Power BI, data analyst, because I'm interested in data, so these things appeal to me. So really, when you look at certifications, across the board, in my opinion, Azure's just looking better if you are more aligned to data. Also, which we'll get to in a bit, there's such a breadth on the Microsoft platform that the learning and search you can get are just, you know, 
I'll open it up here, you can see these are all the certifications that you could look at getting. And they're across infrastructure, data, blah, 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 blah. So a bunch of stuff. So you're all within the same kind of company, the same ecosystem, but you can get all this different uh, knowledge, which I like. So to obtain this knowledge, learning, in AWS you have this training and certification area, right? I could never get any of the training to work. It always tries to make me buy stuff. It's just a nightmare it tries to make me log in my uh, work account. It's so frustrating that I've never done any training in AWS because it just doesn't ever work for me. Whereas in Microsoft, you have this learn platform, learn.microsoft. And here, if we open it up, we'll go to learn.microsoft.com. So for here, you can learn by doing, find technical documentation, showcase your skills, blah, 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 right? And so the way you can actually start doing it is if you write like AZ900, Azure Fundamentals course, I do have this on my channel where I've condensed this into 90 minutes. You can see it's like seven hours or something, um, six hours. But basically here now, you can go in and actually research and follow paths to learn all about different parts of Azure. But not only that, but you can browse a variety of credentials, not just certifications. So like you want to learn about, you know, Active Directory or building AI powered solutions. Bam, click on that. And then there you go, it'll just show you how to do it. So I really rate Microsoft Learning uh, platform. So learn.microsoft.com, go check it out. So love it or hate it, the fifth one is that it's an all-in-one platform. So this means that everything you could possibly need is within it. Now this does restrict you in a way, but also not really because you don't have to use all of these features. You can use other things. So for instance, in DevOps, you could use the pipelines, but you could go and use a Jira board if you want, instead of here. You could go and use GitHub here, blah, blah, blah. But the thing that I like about Azure is you don't need to. So for example, I've done a data engineering tutorial on the channel. It uses the Azure services, which they have everything you would need to do a data engineering end-to-end -end project, other than the Power BI at the very end, and then the data at the beginning, which you give it from your own SQL on your, your home machine. So it has everything you need. Additionally, for my cloud engineering projects that we've got in the channel, so like getting started with Azure and Terraform and building a pipeline in ADO, these all work together to give a unified solution. Whereas in AWS, you have to use different different things. So honestly, really rating Azure right now, um, I'd say if you're getting started in the space, look into Azure. But yeah, just my opinion. So anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.